Hey everybody, Brian Bush, Top Crop Alliance. Today it's a soybean field. So we're in the middle of soybean harvest. For some guys, we're getting towards the tail end of harvest even. So beans have been going well. Two topics I want to cover today. Number one is soybean moistures and maturity. Number two is some diseases we're finding out in the field. So if you're like most guys, you got fields that look like this or you already harvest them off, we're making good progress on soybeans. You know, When you have an above average temperatures, for the first week of October, uh, man, bean fields that a week ago we thought, yeah, we're gonna need a frost or a freeze to get those beans mature. It's amazing how quickly things change with a little bit of heat and wind. So what we're finding is fields that weren't ready yet, they're ready. Unfortunately though, fields that were ready, all of a sudden now, those fields go from good moisture to too dry. You know, we were looking at, you know, 12, 13%. Now all of a sudden those fields are coming in 11, 10, even some nine and nine and a half, eight and a half percent range. Why does that matter? Well, first and foremost, standards, you know, we sell soybeans at 13% moisture. So that means you go to the elevator, they're expecting 13% water, 87% dry matter. As beans get drier, you're giving them more dry matter. So we're not getting the ability to sell that water um, to the elevator. Um, they're happy to take it. They're not gonna discount you for being too dry. Uh, but we're losing out on opportunities. You know, if you were running 80 bushel beans and all of a sudden now they're running 9% instead of 13%, that's 4.4% lower yielding. So on 80 bushel beans, that means you give up three and a half bushels. You could have sold if we'd sold them at 13% instead of at 9%. So it really hurts the pocketbook there. What are some strategies we can do? Well, no one wants to hear this one, but I'm gonna start with it anyways. We plant different maturities. You know, most guys say, ah, just give me one good bean, maybe two good beans, roll on. Having beans mature at different times gives us the ability to harvest those beans as they get ready to mature. As beans get closer to maturity, typically then we, uh, we, we have beans that are 13, 14, 15%. So they're ready to go. Timely harvest, you know, and it was tough this year. You know, we had fields that you checked, still had yellow leaves hanging on them, and they were mature. They, they were 13% beans, 12.5% beans. So if you weren't trying, nosing into some of those fields to test it out, um, they were ready and you didn't know it yet. But, so planting a, a, a range of maturities. Check, move on. What else, Brian? Harvest. What time of the day do you start harvest? How late do you run at night? It's amazing what a heavy dew will do to add moisture back in these beans to help get you back up to a reasonable moisture there. So if you're in that, you know, nine, eight and a half percent range, I hate to wait for a rain, you know, take the chance of, of beans popping out and shattering. Uh, but whether it be some moisture, some rainfall, whether it be just some heavy dews starting earlier in the morning, get, you know, running by eight, eight, eight thirty in the morning to try and keep some of that moisture in, you'll see a dramatic difference between there and running at two o'clock in the afternoon. So the bigger thing though is probably just trying to plan ahead. If you're gonna keep the beans until June, July, there are strategies you can find online about running fans to add moisture back into the bin. So if you're storing these beans, there's definitely a chance you could add moisture back into them. It's kind of difficult. You need to have some warmer temperatures and humid air. So typically it's something that you can only really accomplish during the warmer spring months, not so much during the, the cold winter months there. But something else you can look up too if, you got to, if you're gonna store beans for a while. So, dry moistures. Unfortunately, you know, timely harvest. Think about next year, um, but maybe adjusting your harvest window a little bit um, to try and get some moisture back in these pods is a possibility. Second thing, diseases. You can see behind me here, we've got some leaves hanging on these beans. I don't like that. Anytime you see leaves hanging on, that's a sign these plants didn't die very nicely here. So I pulled a couple samples here. And if you pull up, and this one here, this is kind of common right now. You see down here at the bottom, we got kind of a darkened kind of lesion here about the soil line. This is stem canker. So what happens is the plant gets choked off. This, this disease starts on one side and kind of grows all the way around that stem and girdles it off, shrinks that down, cutting off water nutrients getting up the top of the plant. If you look close on here too, we've got several pods that are smaller, kind of flattish kind of pods. So just tells us this plant did not have the energy it needed late to finish off and do nice. Um, have a second one here. Here's a smaller one, but you can see for sure, just look how much smaller, how much that's kind of grilled off right here, shrunk down that stem, 
and really cut back on the pods we kept on this thing. I mean, when you're only seeing two pods, three pods per node, it's not a good day here. We have ratings for stem canker. So we can definitely go through and look at varieties that you're gonna plant next year. If you have it in the field, um, it's one of these diseases that'll stay in the field. Tillage helps bury the residue, get rid of the disease. We're probably not gonna do a lot of that. I understand that too. So understanding that the risk we have with the varieties, something we can help manage. I typically find this too in the better parts of the field. You know, our higher yielding parts, higher organic matter. So we have higher yield potential is where this kind of sets in as well. I often kind of find as well in a drier fall. It seems like it shows up more um, in the girdling that happens here. When you're already short on moisture coming into the plant, anything that's restricting the water getting up that stem hurts. So hope that helps. If you're seeing any issues, as always, give me a call. I'm happy to come out and look at fields and help diagnose what's going on. Um, and safe, ha happy and safe harvest, everybody. Hope it helps. Thanks.